He became an Anglican priest in 1764. And in 1788, he had completely turned around and actually made, had writings against the slave trade. Pay close attention to the words that we sing today at Amazing Grace. I love, we, love, we love the tunes, but the words, just not forget those. How sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Think about that. He was a wretch like the prodigal son. But now he is found. And then he said, How precious did that grace appear the hour I first believed. When you believe in God, God's grace is there for you to give you the salvation. Now let's look at the other part of the story. It starts in verse 25, which is the story of the elder son. As I said, Jesus could have stopped this parable at this point. It was just about the prodigal son coming back home. But he's also talking about the elder son. And why does he talk about the elder son? Well, who was critical of Jesus in his ministry? This is not a rhetorical question. <laughs> who was the most critical of Jesus? The Pharisees and the scribes. And they thought they were doing everything perfectly. They thought that the, the way that you get to heaven, or the way that you get to God is you follow the law. One of the things we discussed in the Bible study we had this summer on Galatians was how Paul had to emphasize to the Galatians that following the law and following Jewish culture is not how you get to God. It's through the cross of Jesus when Jesus died on that cross. If you go back to Jewish traditions like circumcision and all the other rituals as a way to get to heaven, then you've completely done away with the necessity for the cross. But this elder son is an example in many ways of the Pharisees. Because he was saying, oh, I've done all these things. I've done everything right. And he wanted basically for, to be judged on merit and not on grace. And in human life and human rules, we, you know, it's fine to be graced on merit, but in God's kingdom, we really are, God is there for everyone. In Matthew 22, 20, 12, there's a story of the laborers in the field that Jesus also tells. And this is a story about how a man hires laborers to work in the field. And he ends up paying the ones that he hires in the morning the same as the ones he pays later in the afternoon. And later on, the people in the morning come and complain to him and say, this isn't fair. And he basically says, well, I'm paying you what I said I was going to pay you. I had just chosen to pay everybody the same. And this is like the kingdom of God because Jesus died for everybody. And God accepts sinners no matter how bad they are or when they come to Him. But the elder son is the person we need to continue to remember as we look at life and look at our Christian faith. And we need, you know, we need to remember that not everybody is going to be perfect. Not everybody is going to follow the law. The interesting thing about this story is it leaves open what the elder son decided. We don't know what he decided to do. Did he decide to continue to remain like a Pharisee? Or did he accept the fact that his brother had come home and was saved now and was, had, come, had been born again? What we have to do as Christians is we have to remember we have to rejoice in God granting grace to all people. We hope, we hope that the elder son was able to forgive his brother because essentially we have to be able to forgive those others in order that we enjoy God's kingdom fully. And that we have to remember that God came not only to save the blessed, the wealthy, and the people who have done right, but he came to save all others. So this is, the, this is why we need to look at both parts of the story and why it was so important that the father found it necessary to bring out the fatty calf and, calf and celebrate his son coming home and being born again. Let us pray. Dear Lord, let us celebrate when one who has been lost is found and is born again into the kingdom of God. Remember that all may accept God's gift of salvation no matter where they are in life. Thank you for your steadfast faithfulness to us. Thank you for sending your son to die for us. Bless those who have lost loved ones at St. James. 
and also continue to heal those that have been mentioned today. Continue to heal our minister, Chris Barrett, and continue to bless Chris, Elise, and their family. We pray for the community of Spartanburg. We pray for our state leaders. We pray for our president and our national leaders. We also pray for peace upon the country and for peace in the world in places that are troubled, such as Syria and Afghanistan, and also continue to protect people who are being hurt by natural disasters, such as wildfires. And we just thank you for your love and thank you for what you do for us. And now we pray as you taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, and the glory. If y'all stand and say,